Hey, so remember when I said the best list was coming next? I lied. I am going to be making a brand new series based off Total Drama and Disventure Camp. Basically, what I'm going to do is take all the characters that made the merge in any season, everything from seasons 1 through 6 of Total Drama, the reboot, and Disventure Camp, which is a fan-made online web series based off Total Drama. Of this lot of characters, I randomize the cast for each generation, and my goal is to stay true to the theme and structure of the series in each of its respective seasons, while still creating a transformative timeline based on it having a different cast, though some of the contestants will still be the same, while others will be from different seasons or generations. The cast that I ended up with is this. For Island, I picked 22 characters by using a random number generator, which is something I've used frequently to determine certain things like who does certain challenges and things like that in the spirit of fairness. The only stipulation is that I opted for an even gender ratio with 11 men and 11 women, with Chris and Chef still being the hosts for now. There will probably be lots more changes down the line, but I'll deal with those later. For right now, I'm just going to focus on the first season of Total Drama. I'm also not going to include any of the contestants that were only seen in Ridiculous Race for these seasons, since that would make the process way too complicated, more so than it already is. I do plan on integrating that season into this timeline eventually, but I'm still going to keep that cast mostly the same as its own separate hall of characters, since rewriting a season based around a race is much harder than the Survivor-style thing that all the other seasons are based on. Last thing, if you haven't seen any of these seasons, you're probably going to be in the dark about some of these characters and how and why I write them the way I do, since I'm obviously going to make their actions and interactions different from canon, but they'll still be things that make sense based on those characters' personalities. So just keep that in mind. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's begin. After Chris does the same series intro as he does in the original, the character intros begin. The first impressions are as follows. Beth and Joe would be the first to be introduced. Joe would be fierce and cold, which puts Beth off. Ripper and Harold would then come on. Ripper would try to bully Harold, but Harold would basically just be like, damn, that's crazy. Since Ripper is less competent than Duncan is, he's kind of a buffoon, kind of like Harold is in a similar but also kind of different way. So it would be a half bully slash nerd dynamic and half the gumball tennis episode. Then we would get Trent and Tess. This would be pretty similar to the interactions that uh, Trent and Gwen have which is a theme that is going to continue. Owen, Jeff, and Rosa Maria are all pretty chill and friendly as they're introduced. When Fiore enters, everyone infantilizes her and are concerned that a child is competing. Fiore pretends to appreciate the concern with a twitch in her eye. Izzy, Sierra, Eva, and Sugar make back-to-back -back entrances showing how fucking insane a lot of the competitors are going to be, causing Tess to say she's going to need more pills, and Trent compliments her dark humor. Lindsay and Caleb are both introduced as the hottest people here. Cody still tries to riz up all the women there, no results, but slowly backs away when he sees Sugar vaguely threateningly stare at him. James, Bowie, and Alejandro all make pretty smooth and confident entrances and seem to be generally well-liked. James comes off a bit egotistical and Alejandro plays off of it, showing how well they complement each other. The last person to come is Ellie, who sees everyone doing their thing and naturally makes her feel like an outsider. Beth, Lindsay, and Rosa Maria all get along well and offer to start an alliance before the teams are made. Trent tries to talk to Tess, but she tells him to leave her alone. So he respects her wishes, though he's bummed out. Z would show up last since he would be super late because he thought like the wrong location was the place he was supposed to go to. So he would just get there while the teams are being made and then Chris, he would just add him as the last person to the bass. When they go to the cafeteria, Owen and Sugar get into an eating contest. Owen narrowly wins and Sugar takes this as a challenge. Harold then starts talking about that one guy from My Hero Academia with the sugar quirk and how he could beat both Owen and Sugar in an eating contest. Ripper calls him a nerd until accidentally revealing that his favorite anime is Attack on Titan, which Harold also makes fun of him for. Ripper angrily admits that the dweeb and him might have stuff in common. When the cliff dive challenge is revealed, the killer bass are concerned with child safety laws due to Fiore being there, and she tells them it's okay and that she can take care of herself and she's starting to lose it in the confessional. Episode 2 would start with all of them still standing at the cliff. Beth and Lindsay would be friendly, but Joe would pull Lindsay aside and not let her talk to the enemy. This would confuse Lindsay, but not upset her too much. Joe figures Lindsay is a really good meat shield to have throughout the game, since she's the easiest to exploit. DJ and Courtney are no longer here, which means the only chicken that doesn't jump left is Beth. And as for everyone else who wasn't here, I'm pretty sure all of them would jump. Sugar would jump. Tess would jump, Caleb would jump, Ellie would jump, uh, Rosa Maria would jump, etc, etc. Um, so that would mean that the Screaming Gophers get the same advantage that they do in canon, and they should be able to win just fine with that advantage. There are some players, like 
Eva or Sierra on the killer bass were really strong. Also Alejandro. I don't think it matters though. I mean, Eva was here originally and it still didn't win them the challenge. And the Screaming Gophers also have people like Caleb, Bowie, even Sugar, Joe, Izzy. Like, they, they have plenty of firepower as well. So they should be able to move all the stuff with the advantage and build the hot tub first. So this means that killer bass lose and are up for elimination. Because Beth is the only one that didn't jump, she would naturally be targeted by her team. But Alejandro would want her to stay on the team because from his perspective, she's the most likely to simp for him and the easiest to manipulate amongst the women on his team. So Alejandro and James come up with a plan to put a bigger target on someone else. Alejandro is a pretty perceptive guy, so I think he would probably eavesdrop on a conversation between... Rosa Maria, Lindsay, maybe Beth, and Rosa Maria talking about her, you know, her past. So I think what Alejandro and James would do is um, they would purposefully talk about Rosa Maria's teen pregnancy in front of Z and pretend that he wasn't supposed to hear it and then convince him to make an announcement in order to, quote unquote, make her feel appreciated, which causes everyone to be outraged and embarrassed at Z. Alejandro or James would then shake hands after the fact and agree to start a long path of chicanery together throughout the rest of the season. Beth and Fiore might get one or two votes, Beth for not jumping and Fiore for being a child since a lot of the people probably just don't think she belongs there. But the vast majority of the votes obviously go to Z. Alejandro and James included since that's their plan. Obviously Rosa Maria is going to vote for that. Um, and Owen, Ellie, Jeff, I think also go along with it. So Z is getting the majority of the votes. Z would be bummed out, but he doesn't make a big deal out of it, and is still kind of confused why he got kicked off, because he's Z. Episode 3 would start as normal. They all go on that really long run and get tricked into eating the, the sleepy food. I think this is where Joe and Bowie's rivalry would start to play up, since these two are probably the fastest, most agile people on this team. I think hey, maybe you could make a case for Caleb, but I think he would kind of hang back. Because he's kind of chill like that, I guess. So yeah, I think Bowie and Joe would kind of start their not-so-friendly uh, rivalry uh, right like right about here. And of course, after that, they all, they all get sleepy, and then the big sleep challenge starts, yada yada, you, you know how it is. Tess would be opening up to Trent, and they would bond. Except Tess doesn't last nearly as long as Gwen does in this challenge, since in Tess's actual canon season, she did not win the exact same challenge and didn't last nearly as long as Gwen did. But they would still get enough time to bond and get to know each other pretty well. Beth and Rosa Maria talk for a bit, which leads to Rosa Maria telling Beth about the details of her teen pregnancy, and how Beth's boy craziness should be put in check to avoid a similar fate, which is advice that Beth appreciates. Fiore decides to jump on Owen's stomach just for the sake of it, expecting Owen to be pissed at her and hoping to use that against him, but instead he's cool with it and just does a big fart which persuades Fiore to leave. Fiore has a confessional saying that was a huge waste of time and that everyone is annoying her with how they infantilize her, which then leads to her hanging out with Ellie since they can both kind of relate to being an outcast in a sense. Bowie would be bored or put off with pretty much everyone, except for Alejandro and James, who he can tell are intelligent and would be interesting to pair up with but realizes it's too early for that since they're on different teams, so for now he's just going to stick to being good at challenges to stay in. Fiore would need to blow off steam, but wouldn't want to reveal her true bitter self, so instead she intentionally annoys Eva, knowing she has a short temper, causing Eva to scream at Fiore, which alienates her team even more than in the original, since, you know, this is a child. I still think the Gophers are going to win this challenge. I really don't see anyone outlasting Bowie and Joe, especially because I think... They would be competing not just for the team, but against each other as well. And I think they'd both be really good at this challenge, especially Joe, considering she wakes up at like five in the morning to do workout routines, like in Revenge of the Island, that is canon. So yeah, I think Joe would probably win for the Screaming Gophers here. This means that once again, the Bass lose and are up for elimination. Alejandro and James agree it makes more sense to get rid of Eva since she's unhinged. No point in putting effort in to prevent what's going to happen naturally. Voting is pretty much the same as canon. Eva is getting unanimously voted out. This episode would start with Sierra start to take interest in Cody, even though they're on different teams. She wouldn't nearly be as obsessive or stalkerish as in canon, since this is season one and Cody doesn't have a pre-established reputation, but she would still be into him. And I think because she's not as unhinged, along with the fact that in season one, Cody is a bit more pervy and desperate for female attention, so I think her being less creepy and him being more creepy would 
kind of balance out, and I think Cody would actually go for it. They wouldn't make out like Tyler and Lindsay did, but would get along in a romantic way. Now for the challenge, while the Bass do have really strong players like Sierra, Alejandro, Owen, the Gophers have Caleb, Sugar, Bowie, and Harold, who won the challenge originally against Owen. And these five would simply outweigh these two, these like two or three, in terms of who's winning this challenge. Duncan isn't here on the Bass to form a counter strat, and there's not really anyone on Team Bass who could pull off something like that besides maybe Alejandro. And even then, that's a stretch, since I don't think he'd be that go as good of a tactician as Duncan in something like this compared to, say, Joe, who is on the other team. So, the Bass might win, like, one round, but Joe would actually form a plan like Duncan to crush the Bass, more likely, meaning the Gophers would win three times in a row, probably. And, of course, they also have Harold as the backup, um, if it does come down to the last man standing, and he could do the same thing that he did in the original. Joe would now be solidified as team leader, with only Ripper briefly challenging her before swiftly getting kicked in the nuts, which Harold laughs at him for. This makes it even harder for Lindsay to interact with Beth and Rosa Maria, since she would now be very afraid of Joe, which is now starting to make her upset. Especially because she would also fall asleep really quickly in the Big Sleep episode, so she wouldn't have a lot of time to talk to them either. Alejandro and James agree they need all the allies they can get with how many L's their team has been taking, so Alejandro decides to make a move by flirting with Beth, since he knows she's insecure and figures he can very easily manipulate her. When Rosa Maria tries to intervene because she felt Beth didn't listen to her advice from one episode earlier, Beth protests saying Al is a good guy. Rosa Maria just naturally wouldn't trust him from her own experiences, however. Something that Al takes notice of and perceives her to be a threat because of this. Since Sierra went off with Cody for most of the challenge, they'd both know she's on the chopping block and want to do something about it. So with Cody's quick thinking, Cody convinces Joe to convince the killer Bass to eliminate Owen, and Cody's reasoning would be that he was a threat in the challenge, so it would be advantageous for Joe to try to manipulate the other team into getting rid of him. I still think Owen versus Harold could be the end of the final round, so Joe would agree that this is a good idea for a shrimp like Cody, and he and she would take credit for it. Even though Joe doesn't have inside information on the other team, she would luck out with her talking to various members of the team, because most of them already have reasons to vote them out. For Ellie, he's way too out there for her. Uh, for Sierra, obviously, it would be part of Cody's plan to keep her in the game. Uh, Fiore would be annoyed by him because he's useless and he farts a lot. Uh, Alejandro would be annoyed by him f uh, the same way he does in canon, and James would just go along with what Alejandro wants. So that's already five votes against Owen, which is the majority out of the nine. So no matter what, uh, even if these four vote against the same person, say, I don't know, Sierra, Owen would still be going home. Cody feels a bit guilty for what he did, but with Sierra there for him, it's worth it. Alejandro would flirt with Beth some more, causing Rosa Maria to get really frustrated with Beth in a pushy, motherly sort of way, since we've seen in Disventure Camp that she kinda got up in Lake's business like that. And because Beth isn't exactly the most emotionally mature person, she would call Rosa Maria jealous or projecting her poor decisions onto Beth, causing them to now be in a fight and Beth now fully confiding in Alejandro, which is exactly what he and James wanted to begin with. Harold wouldn't beatbox this time in the challenge, since he only went in place of someone else, but now Caleb, Trent, and Sugar would all go. Bowie would offer to do some hoops for the last spot, but Sugar would literally push him over to demand that she does her quote-unquote talent. Bowie in a confessional now notes how Sugar is going to be a problem. Beth insists Alejandro go up, which Rosa Maria scoffs at him from across the room for, Alejandro fakes humility while agreeing to do acrobatics and shit. Jeff also really wants to go, since, since he can now sense all the drama going on on his team, along with all the L's he, they've been taking, so he would want to lift their spirits by contributing. Especially now that Owen, the most fun guy on his team, is now gone. And Jeff would probably do some, like, frat boy mechanical bull riding or something. Or maybe, like, a skateboard or something, I don't know. Ellie offers to go, to everyone's shock. Um, especially Fiore's. But Ellie would admit in a confessional uh, that even though she's not the biggest fan of her team, she wants to contribute something to hopefully get them a W. Her hula hooping talent would only be okay getting a 5. This makes Ellie worried that her mediocrity will put a target on her back in the future. Fiore slaps her and says she shouldn't care what the others think. 
Ellie is now super conflicted between Fiore's intensity and the rest of the team. These would be the overall scores that everyone gets. Alejandro gets an 8, Jeff gets a 6, and Ellie gets a 5. On the Gophers, Caleb would get a 7 by doing the same thing Justin does. Trent would get a 9 by doing the same thing he did in the original. And Sugar would get a negative 10. Uh, the Bass would win this challenge because Sugar would do so bad that the Gophers would automatically lose because it would just be that bad. Getting Ellie, Sierra, Beth, Alejandro, and James on board to party. Ellie says, come on, we won, let's celebrate to Fiore, which she agrees to, if only for a little while, though Fiore says in a confessional that it's okay to get loose every now and then, but everyone on the team is still dead meat. Jeff goes to check on a sobbing Rosa Maria, since she would be the only one not celebrating and having fun like the rest of them. And Jeff asks why Rosa Maria said she doesn't really want to talk about all the reasons why, the Beth fight, the teen pregnancy, that whole thing. And Jeff isn't exactly the most emotionally intelligent person, so I don't think he would really try to delve into that. So he would just give her some leftover cake, and they have a wholesome hug, which does help Rosa Maria a little. Jeff is proud of himself and his team today, and says it's only uphill from here. As for the Gophers, they unanimously vote Sugar off because her performance was god-awful. Even though it wasn't really Bowie's doing, he says he wanted her out in confessional, and so she went out. Even if her performance wasn't awful, he says he still would have gotten rid of her because when he wants something done, shit gets done. The next episode would start with Joe being pissed about their winning streak being broken, and starts to take it out on everyone. When Caleb approaches her and tells her to stop in order to stay in the game. Joe asks why he cares and to mind his own business. Caleb says he doesn't want a strong player like her to be booted too early because it'd be a waste of her talents. Joe genuinely appreciates the compliment and decides working with someone more competent like Caleb would be good to have, so she has both a human shield with Lindsay and a useful ally with Caleb. Caleb wants to make an alliance with her too, since he thinks being with the team leader is a good way to keep him safe. Um, he wouldn't develop feelings for, for Joe though, unlike Priya, since they're too different. Ripper would still continue bullying Harold, while Bowie just stares at them and quietly calls them both idiots. When the two teams go camping at night, Cody and Sierra would go off together and both get lost. Trent and Tess would officially start dating and hook up this episode, since they can now be alone in the woods, and Harold and Ripper would both hear the noises from the hookup and both argue about what animal it is. Bowie would facepalm and once again comment on their stupidity, and then come to the realization that both Harold and Ripper could be useful idiots for him in the future. Alejandro and James continue to manipulate Beth into thinking Rosa Maria is a villain, which she fully buys into. Fiore, playing back into her bitterness, intentionally destroys Beth's friendship bracelets in the campfire when no one is looking, not yet sure to who to blame it on. Beth is distraught upon discovering this, and Alejandro and James swear to find the culprit, since they're all kind of, you know, together. Whichever team wins this episode is the first to have all their team members back the next morning. Tess and Trent wouldn't get lost since Bowie was close enough to notice them and also wouldn't get lost, so the last people to show up would be Cody and Sierra, since they were the only ones who really got lost. And of the two of them, Cody is more likely to find his way back easier, but he would insist on letting her win to save herself from elimination, to which Sierra reluctantly agrees. Cody's new plan to avoid getting kicked out is to approach Tess and Trent. Unlike in the original, Cody can't help bring them together since they're already officially dating, so instead he persuades them to vote with him since if Cody leaves, the next biggest target will likely be on them as a power couple instead of him. He uses Joe as an example of someone who won't be merciful to them as a couple since she's the team leader and she's brutal like that. So Cody's logic would be that it's better to help him so that there's less heat on their backs. Bowie would eavesdrop on this conversation and tell them he'll help them vote for Izzy for being too strong and unreliable if they all agree to pay back the favor, to which they agree. Bowie tries to get Harold and Ripper on board as well, but they refuse to agree on anything, so they just get Lindsay to do it instead, which works out well because Izzy scares her. Lindsay says she's afraid of going against Joe, but Bowie tells her she's not someone to trust anyway, and that she should work with him instead. Cody, Trent, and Tess all decide to jump on the bandwagon, essentially forming a five-person alliance between these five people on the left. Joe, Izzy, and Caleb would vote for Cody, giving him three votes, and Izzy would get five votes from Tess, Trent, Cody, Bowie, and Lindsay. So Izzy is eliminated with the most votes. She wouldn't be chased down by the RNCP this time, but she would still stay in the woods. Starting with the next episode, everyone would still go around and share their biggest fear. Joe's ego would prevent her from knowing about the five-person alliance in her team, 
Bowie would be very happy with his new position as basically team leader at this point, and would know that Joe would eventually target him if she finds out, so he needs to get rid of her ASAP. Beth, Alejandro, and James are still all looking for, for the culprit who burned the necklaces, and James and Alejandro would very clearly decide to blame it on Rosa Maria, since they were already kind of depicting her as a villain, and convince Beth that it had to be her, even though they don't really know the real answer and don't care. Meanwhile, Fiore is just waiting to pin it on whoever annoys her the most. As for the fears for each person, Caleb's fear would be confronting his ex, he passes. Joe would be being perceived as overly feminine, she also passes. Caleb and Joe both insult each other's fears and... Uh, because they both think it's stupid, I think Confession will say the other is a pain in the ass sometimes. Harold would still fail with the ninjas. Rippers would be ask out a girl on a date and handle rejection. He would ask out Lindsay, and when she rejects him, he would cry out, why? And he would fail. Cody would still fail with the trash bomb. Trent would still pass with the mime. Now, for Tess's, I think her biggest fear would be throwing the pills in the fire like she did in Disventure Camp. But given that this is season one Chris, I think that would be too dark even for him. So instead, Chris would make Tess reveal that she takes those pills to help with her depression, which is obviously still screwed up, but not as screwed up. And it would be something that Chris would be willing to do. Trent doesn't judge her for it at all and tells her that. And when Tess gets irritated at the seemingly superficial gesture, Trent clarifies he's being genuine and tells her about the weird nine thing about the train and his grandpa dying and everything which not only solves this conflict, but brings them closer together with a, deeper with a deeper level of trust between them. And, of course, Tess would pass. Lindsay would still pass with the bad haircut. For Bowie, I'm not entirely sure, but because he's gay, I think it would be funny if his biggest fear was having a crazy stalker girl like Sierra. There was a scene where he talked about what the hell is wrong with straight couples in canon, so I feel like that might make sense. So Chef, so what Chef would do is he would hypnotize Sierra into thinking Bowie is Cody, and Bowie has enough to bring her back to reality. Even though Sierra isn't as insane as in canon, the fact that she has to be away from Cody for her fear would be enough to trigger her insanity. So, and Bowie would still resolve this, so he passes. This means that the Gophers have six passes and three fails. Now for the bass. Ellie's fear was swimming with sharks for five minutes, which she would pass. The team would be genuinely impressed with Ellie for doing this, except Fiore, who would still be dismissive of her. So Ellie lays into Fiore, and Fiore swears revenge by the end of the challenge. Sierra would be being away from Cody, and even though she's not as insane in canon, uh, she would still fail because it's Sierra. Rosa Maria would be being abandoned in the woods. She would fail. Alejandro would be to fight his big brother, and since he doesn't have the same resolve that he did in All-Stars with the whole Heather thing, he would fail. James's biggest fear would be to give up his clout, which is a fail. Fiore would be the moose ride, as it was in canon. Uh, this would be a fail. Even though she passed in, the, in her canon season, she would throw intentionally this time because she's mad at Ellie and doesn't want to do it. Jeff would still have the hail, which he would pass, um, and Beth would also pass hers, like in canon. So this gives... Bass, three passes, and the Gophers, six. So even if somebody who passes gets triple points, like they offered Courtney, it still wouldn't matter because the Gophers would still be winning after that. So the Bass lose because the difference in points is just too steep. Because of this, Ellie would snap at Fiore and try to join other people on the team, try to join other people besides Fiore on the team as well, prompting Fiore to pin Beth's bracelets burning in the fire on Ellie. Everyone besides James and Alejandro, since they're the smartest ones here, believe Ellie did it. This prompts Rosa Maria to talk to Beth, since even though she's mad, she doesn't think she deserved that. And this leads to both of them apologizing. Rosa for being too pushy and Beth for insulting her, and them making up. This frustrates Alejandro because now he knows Rosa Maria doesn't trust him, which will make it harder for Beth to be on his side, so James suggests that they get Ellie to vote Rosa Maria, since since obviously Ellie will take any deal to save herself at this point. And to even up the votes, James gets Jeff in a guys pact as well, to start picking the girls off, since in canon, Duncan convinced him to do this in spite of his girlfriend being a conflict of interest, and now that Bridget is no longer here, uh, he would have even more reason to agree to this. This means that the votes will be Ellie, Jeff, James, and Alejandro voting against Rosa Maria, and then Beth, Rosa Maria, Fiore, and Sierra voting against Ellie, because they think she did the bracelets thing. And this means that the vote is a tie. However, Ellie would automatically win the tiebreaker, since Ellie beat her fear and Rosa Maria didn't, 
which means that Ellie wins by default and Rosa Maria is eliminated. Beth is sad about Rosa Maria leaving, but she tells her to win and that she believes in her. Alejandro and James and Fiore have separate confessionals, one of them celebrating and the other mad. The next episode would begin with Beth no longer trusting Alejandro and James after what happened with Rosa Maria, but they wouldn't care anymore now that they have the majority of the votes with these four against these three. But we would tell Trent, Tess, Lindsay, and Cody that they have a strong enough lead where they could just throw the challenge and vote Joe off. And everyone would agree with this plan except for Cody, since Cody would be secretly unsure because the guilt between him orchestrating both Owen and Izzy's eliminations and now doing Joe's would start to get to him, and it would make him feel like he's playing dirty and that he doesn't deserve to be there. Now, this is the episode where they all get in pairs in the boats to go to Boney Island. So the pairs would be as follows. Alejandro and Ellie, James and Jeff, Beth and Fiore, Sierra and Cody, Joe and Caleb, Harold and Ripper, Trent and Tess, and Lindsay and Bowie. Alejandro doesn't try to flirt or put on an act. He's pretty direct and just tells Ellie it is in both of their best interests to get rid of the other girls on the team, starting with Beth. Ellie would say in confessional that she doesn't trust Alejandro in general, but she still agrees that he's right. Even though Sierra and Cody are on separate teams, they would naturally become a pair just because of the numbers. Cody starts to worry Sierra is becoming too clingy, and doesn't want her to throw the game for him, and also the guilt from Owen and Izzy's eliminations is really starting to sink in. Sierra tells him not to worry, but Cody is still distraught about it. With Joe and Caleb, Joe would say she smells a rat, and Caleb admits in confessional he kinda wants her gone too. Harold and Ripper would still have more chicanery, and, and eventually they would all get to the island at relatively the same time. Since Duncan nor Izzy is on Boner Island anymore, Cody would now make the fire the fastest, in Dodge Brawl, he created that weird kinetic energy thing by rubbing the ball on his shirt, so I think he could do something similar here. But Ripper would trip over the firewood and they'd have to start over. Sierra would feel bad for Cody, so she wouldn't be of much help. So I'll just say Ellie gets the fire going before the Gophers can reignite theirs, giving the Bass the lead. Beth still gets the bad RNG Boney Island Moai statue. Bowie and Lindsay would still fall into quicksand and Cody would try and fail to save them. So I think now Caleb would take Izzy's place in successfully saving them out of the quicksand. Bowie figures he should return the favor by trying to get Caleb over to his alliance, especially because that would be a win-win. And Caleb would actually agree, since Joe is a loose cannon waiting to burst and she's gotta go. Bowie says in confessional everything's coming together, they're on track to lose and Joe is about to be kicked out. Jeff still gets the splinter injury and Fiore mocks him, which actually causes the team to call her out since... It was treated so seriously in the original. Joe would start to rage out at her team for dragging behind. She would make the fire and almost take the lead on the way back to the island, but James pretends Cody is drowning to effectively turn Sierra into a super motor, pulling all their boats to the finish line and making the bass win, meaning that Gophers are now up for elimination. With a 6-1 to one vote, Joe is set up for elimination, but Cody would quit because he doesn't like how obsessive Sierra has been over him, says it's not healthy and that she should win the game on her own merits without him. Plus, he feels dirty with how he got Owen and Izzy removed from the game and feels like he doesn't belong there. Cody and Sierra hug before Cody proudly but sadly walks the dock of shame. Bowie is annoyed since his whole plan fell apart, but isn't too upset because they still have five to Joe's three. Bowie would still make sure Caleb is still in on the plan of booting Joe, which he is, but Joe easily gets Lindsay to spill the beans for Bowie's big plan slash lines to get rid of her, which infuriates Joe. Joe bullies Harold and Ripper into helping her, and because Ripper would respect Joe, he would tell her to drive a wedge between Trent and Tess in order to disintegrate the opposing alliance. Joe would admit this is a good idea and say in confessional that perhaps Ripper isn't a total idiot and is worth keeping around for a bit before betraying him. Using a random number generator, the hunters for this challenge are as follows. For the Gophers, the hunters are Joe, Ripper, and Trent. And for the Bass, they are... Beth, Ellie, and Jeff. So everyone on the right here are the hunters and everyone else is the deer. This works out really well for Joe because she and Ripper can get close enough to Trent to backstab him, effectively putting their plan into motion. This plan would be to trick Trent into shooting Tess by making him think that she's on the other team. But after Trent fires one shot and realizes what he's done, Joe would rapid fire at Tess right after the fact to make it look as if Trent completely unloaded paint on her on purpose. When Trent tries to explain, Tess storms off angry and calls him an ass. Trent is mad at both Joe and himself for what happened. Because Fiore and Sierra are the only ones left on the team not linked to James and Alejandro, 
Beth would think it's a good idea to tell them about the Moai statue, thinking it's good luck, only for Fiore to tell her it's actually a bad omen. Beth says that she's being ridiculous, and because Sierra is naturally perceptive when it comes to Diabolus Ex Machina, aka the opposite of plot armor, she would warn Beth to be careful. As for the challenge, I think it'd be pretty close, but I think the Gophers would win. The bass aren't easy to hit with people like Alejandro or Sierra, but the Gophers still have players like Bowie, Caleb, and Harold, who are difficult to beat in this, plus they just have better hunters. Mainly with Joe. Trent and Ripper probably wouldn't be the best, but like, I don't think Beth or really any of these three, Jeff, Ellie, or Beth, would really be that good either. I, st I still think the Gophers just have better hunters overall. Fiore would decide to pin the Moai statue on Sierra because she would really start to get on her nerves. Without Cody, Sierra would latch onto someone else, and this would really piss Fiore off because Sierra is just naturally, like, very intense like that. When she does this to her in front of the team, Beth would feel guilty for not stepping in to defend Sierra because she knows it's either her or her. But she'd also now realize that the burn French bracelets was Fiore and not Ellie, but is mad at Fiore asking her why she pinned that on Sierra because she didn't deserve it. Fiore calls Beth a softy bitch who needs to accept this game is meant to be played dirty and that she'll be next if she isn't careful. Now, as for the vote, again, we still have this four-person alliance on the left here. Even if Beth doesn't vote for Sierra due to her conscience, it doesn't really matter. Fiore and this four-person alliance would all vote for Sierra anyway, making it a 5-2 vote at minimum. The next episode is the cooking one. Joe and Jeff would be the head chefs for their respective teams. Beth would try apologizing to Ellie for believing she burned her friendship bracelets, even though it was Fiore. Ellie would admit she probably would have done the same thing, and they both make a pact to vote off Fiore for their shared disdain of her. Fiore, Alejandro, and James would all work together. Nothing major happens here. Fiore isn't a real threat to these guys, and she wouldn't be too bothered by either of them since they're both competent and not too preppy. Bowie would still lock Joe in the freezer for the funny after being fed up with her, but they would both agree to vote off Trent instead of each other since he's dead weight for the team being sorry for himself after after what happened with Tess. Since their alliances are now at a standstill with a 4-4 four to four tie, obviously Bowie has these three, Joe has these three, and, th and neither of them want to do a tiebreaker, so they would just both agree to get out Trent the first chance they get. Trent would try apologizing to Tess, and she wouldn't have it until he saves a chunk of the meal for her after the challenge and gets a chance to fully explain what happened. Because their bond has been super strong up to this point, Tess would believe him and they would make up again. As for the challenge itself, because of Ripper's methods, Lindsay's stupidity, and Joe being locked in the freezer, they would still lose even without Owen eating their food because there are simply too many reasons for them to fail here. Because everyone besides Tess and Trent himself are voting for Trent because of the pact Bowie and Joe made, Trent is voted off. But he doesn't mind since he already met Tess and that's more than enough for him and they kiss right before Trent leaves the island. So the next episode is the three course trust challenge thing. And it's implied that Chris chose the pairs specifically to infuse drama into it. With that in mind, I think the pairs would be as follows. Gophers would have Ripper and Harold, Tess and Lindsay, and then Bowie and Joe. As for the bass, they would have, they would have Beth and Fiore, James and Jeff, and Alejandro and Ellie. Even though I chose the teams by what I think Chris would do, the teams for the first challenge would be Ripper and Harold versus Beth and Fiore, and the Bass would win this one. Ripper does the underwear tear thing with Harold and causes him to fall, and Beth is a much smaller target since Chef is uh, targeting both of them, and Beth is now more focused on winning the game to accomplish her goals, aka outlast Fiore and make it as far as possible, and her determination would give her the win. Round two, however, goes to the gophers. This is the removing the poison from the blowfish thing. And um, Jeff would screw up the poison for James, and Tess would do it correctly for Lindsay. And because I'd rather not have someone actually get poisoned, I'm just going to say James has a built-in immunity that only makes it moderately painful, but not detrimental to his health. And then the tie-breaking round, the Gophers would win round three. Even though Bowie and Joe would be at each other's throats, they would still win this round since they're both very, very competitive and both very race-oriented. Alejandro and Ellie, we've seen them both lose stuff like this. Ellie in the finale of Disventure Camp and Alejandro losing the hurdle thing to Heather. So I think they would both hit a few obstacles and they would overall just be slower than the other team. Meaning that the Gophers win 2-1, to one, sending the Bass to elimination. Because Ellie already forgave Beth, Ellie would get the rest of the alliance, which is at this point the rest of the team, to vote off Fiore 5-1. to one, Since now it would be these four and Ellie... 
not wanting to get rid of Beth. Shoot, they would obviously just get rid of Fiore instead. Since it's convenient for everyone to do so for various reasons. That being, Beth wants to stay in, Fiore wants Beth to stay in, and then these three will just get anyone that's not part of the Alliance out, so they all just target Fiore. Fiore tells Beth to enjoy it now, since Beth is now the only person left out of the Alliance, and she's practically guaranteed to go home next. Since this next one is just the Chef Hatchet training program, and there aren't really any romances brewing at this point, this episode is mostly just challenge-oriented. With the canoe thing, Lindsay would still ring the bell first, uh, making her the first person out of the challenge. And throughout all the rest of the stuff, I think the people that would reach the blood rush thing at the end would be Jeff and Alejandro versus Joe and Caleb. I think Tess would also make it pretty far, but not as far as Gwen did, so she would also be out by this point. Even though Jeff and Alejandro could go for a while, Jeff did so in canon, and Alejandro walks on his hands in All-Stars. And I can definitely see one or both of these guys outlasting Caleb, even though he's muscular. Joe lives for this kind of stuff. There's no way anyone is beating her here. In fact, she'd probably enjoy most of this challenge, since she already does this on a daily basis before the sunrise even comes up anyway, basically. And she would also develop a newfound respect for Sergeant Chef, which could be mutual. Joe wins the challenge, meaning the killer bass are once again sent to elimination. Beth, knowing that she's in trouble, would beg Ellie to get someone else voted off. And after thinking about it for a bit, Ellie would agree and convince James to vote for Alejandro, since James was gonna betray him at some point anyway. And James is smart enough to know that Alejandro is a much bigger threat than Beth. So in a 3-2 vote, Alejandro is eliminated to his utter shock. He swears revenge on his whole team, especially for James, for betraying him, but James points out they've been playing dirty all season, so it was only a matter of time before it was going to happen to him too. Next episode is once again a three-part challenge, so I did the same thing with random teams. We got Bowie and Lindsay, Caleb and Ripper, and Harold and Tess, with Joe not participating. And then for the Bass, with only four people left, we'd have... Beth and Ellie, and then James James and Jeff, and then for the last part, it would be Jeff and Ellie. This time, Ripper is the one who writes the anonymous love letter instead of Harold, and the love letter would be to Joe. And Beth and Lindsay, even though they're on separate teams, would argue who it's for, and they can't figure it out. Bowie wins skydiving due to his agility, and James would win the moose riding, making it 1-1 for each team. But Harold would lose the mud race against Jeff and Ellie because he would see Ellie's boobs and lose the same way. Harold knows he's going home, but he rigs the votes against Ripper, similar to how he did it against Courtney to get back in Duncan. But this time, no one would really care enough to defend Ripper's name, so it's an added reason for this elimination to go through. Before leaving, Ripper would reveal the letter was for Joe, and Joe would appreciate it because he respects her as a dominant leader, and they would kind of be a thing, I guess, but nothing too gross, unlike in the canon of the reboot, because I'm not doing that. Battle of the Sexes eating challenge is really just between Bowie and Joe. And now we are at the merge. Since Eva and Izzy are both still here, it makes sense for both of them to return again. This episode is largely similar to the original, with the only real differences being Lindsay and Beth developing their friendship more, since now that the merge is here, they don't really have the pressure of, you know, staying separate on those separate teams. James would have a confessional saying that Eva and Joe are both so scary and cutthroat, and that whoever loses between the two of them is definitely going home with a smirk on his face. Bowie would admit, as much as he doesn't like Joe, he really wants her to beat Eva since she's the less unhinged and more deserving of the two to win. Jeff just says something stupid in confessional. Eva would lose to Joe instead of Lashana because Joe defeats the bear. Joe also wouldn't fear Eva the same way the others do, and she would still get the private trailer. The vote is still unanimously for Eva. Bowie would thank Joe for taking down Eva, and it would have sucked to, and says it would have sucked to have her go instead, because then he wouldn't be able to beat her himself. This banter starts to have their rivalry be turn into a kind of mutually friendly one, in the sense they both get a thrill out of it, even though they still hate each other. Think Ally Heather but platonic. Bowie and James would both have the idea for a guy's alliance, Bowie to fight off Joe, and James to re-expand his pre-merge alliance. With this, all five of the guys would agree to form an alliance. Beth and Lindsay talk about how nice it is that they can finally hang out together, how Lindsay felt bad about being controlled by both Joe and Bowie in the past, and how she wants to be more independent going forward. Beth would talk about everything that happened with Fiore, Alejandro, the burn bracelets, the Moai statue, etc., and Lindsay wouldn't be able to follow what she's saying, 
and they'd help each other out with a challenge. Jeff would still dive into the toilet, since that's what he originally did. Now, I could have done a random number generator for deciding who gets immunity, since that's obviously, like, the big broken prize. A lot of people seem to agree that it was not random, and that the producers just gave it to the antagonist for plot armor's sake, and I have no reason not to follow that here, so I'm gonna say that Joe gets immunity, meaning that Bowie can't target her. So the Guys Alliance find the next best option and vote for Izzy. Ellie and Tess likely also vote for her as well, meaning she has seven votes and is sent packing. And the girls wouldn't know about the guy's alliance, so they'd have no reason to all team up on a guy to counter this vote, meaning that Izzy is still gone. This next episode is the one where they have to hide from Chef. Bowie would be smart enough to find a hiding spot Chef can't find. Joe would search through the kitchen and almost find Lindsay and Beth under the table, but Harold would fall through the roof instead, trying to practice his mad skills as he's hiding up there. And Joe would just get immunity that way. Since in this challenge, if you catch someone, you get immunity even if you're already caught for some reason. Caleb would then flip the table over and surprise both Beth and Lindsay, effortlessly picking them up after Joe leaves, telling them they really should have picked a better hiding spot. Ellie would overhear Jeff talking about the Guys Alliance and decides she needs to warn the other girls about this. Now, I think Bowie would be the only one who doesn't get found, and Joe and Caleb would both have immunity. Since Bowie, Joe, and Caleb have immunity, the girls would have to gun for one of the three other guys. And they wouldn't pick Jeff since he's too nice, and they wouldn't pick James either, since James agreed to save Beth over Alejandro, and Beth wants to return the favor. So she talks to James and gets them to vote Harold with them. And since James obviously loves playing betrayal in this game, he would definitely go along with that. And this would be five votes against Harold, and obviously Joe and Bowie are voting for each other, meaning that at most, these three would be voting, would be the next most votes for someone else, so Harold would get the most votes and he would be out. Because James loves betraying people and going along with his plan, he said he would like the darker side of Beth showing, and this would make Beth ponder as to what kind of person she's becoming. The guys would all be extra determined to stick together now, now that the girls know about the Alliance and outnumber them and are trying to pick them off as well. James and Bowie grin at each other as they get the idea to have Caleb flirt with Beth and Lindsay in order to drive a wedge between them and get them on their side. And because Caleb has no strings attached to anyone this season, he would have no issue doing it. As for whether this works or not, I think it works on Lindsay pretty easily, but maybe not Beth, since she's already been betrayed so much this season that she's automatically going to be cynical. Remembering Rosa Maria's advice regarding Alejandro, Beth warns Lindsay not to fall for it, but because Lindsay had to deal with Joe controlling her earlier earlier this season, she would associate that controllingness with Beth, and they would fight because of it. Bowie and James are both delighted to hear the results of what Caleb did, but Caleb would begin to feel bad about what he did, since he does want to be strategic, but he's not cruel or villainous, and only really wanted the votes, but not to ruin their friendship. I'm not going to bother trying to figure out who gets which bike, since that process in canon is way too complicated, so instead I'm just going to go off of who I think is getting through the race. Because there were four who made it to the sudden death race originally, I stuck true to that, and I had Bowie, Caleb... Joe and Ellie make it. Beth and Lindsay's ongoing feud would keep Caleb feeling guilty during the sudden death race, causing him to be the first one to wipe out. I also think Ellie is probably going to wipe out, since while she is competent and I think she'd make it to the second round, there were a lot of traps in this course and she would definitely be pretty far behind the other two, and that determination would make her wipe out as well. This leaves Bowie and Joe as two bitter rivals left to win immunity. And while I think it would be very close, I'm going to give the slight edge to Bowie, since I think he's more agile and would be slightly better at bike racing. Which means that Joe is auto-eliminated. She would try to tackle Bowie in a furious rage as she's taken away by Chef. With everyone being shocked at the surprise auto-elimination, everyone would feel kind of bad for Joe, even though they don't really like her, since that elimination was kind of bullshit. Bowie would be in confessional saying now that his biggest rival is gone, he's got this game in the bag and no one can stop him. Next one is the horror episode. Bowie and James would prompt Caleb to interact with Beth and or Lindsay again, but he would refuse, saying he feels bad about the whole thing. Bowie and James both now view Caleb as a liability, which, combined with him being a very good challenge threat, is the reason why they now want him gone. The challenge itself wouldn't be too different from the canon besides the people here. Ellie and Tess both wouldn't really care or think it's real. Caleb would try to help both Beth and Lindsay, to stop fighting, but in the process, the three of them would get caught by Chef, and Beth would realize how after what Caleb said to them, 
and some personal reflection that she was too harsh on Lindsay, so she would try to fend off Chef in defense of Lindsay, but fail miserably. So all three of them get caught. First Caleb, then Beth, defending Lindsay, and then Lindsay. Jeff and James are still caught in the bathroom like Jeff and DJ were originally, so they're both out as well. Tess also gets bored and goes out in the woods to find people and also would get caught after a while. And I think that Bowie would be the one to ultimately beat Chef, but Ellie would be the one to beat the real Chainsaw Killer with a hook, giving her immunity. Not that it matters, since this is an auto-elimination episode anyway. And for who was eliminated, the reasoning behind who was eliminated would just be who would be the least likely to survive a horror movie as the challenge went down. And I think the two that would come to mind the most would obviously Beth and Lindsay, since they were both caught at, at the beginning, but unlike Caleb, they would scream way louder, making them the two most pathetic ones, since they would be perceived as the most defenseless by Chris. And I think between the two of them, Chris would get rid of Beth here, since she also made herself a target on top of that, meaning that she'd be the least likely to survive in a horror movie. But Beth takes her elimination in stride by ultimately staying true to herself as a kind and selfless person, and lasted longer than her detractor said she would. Lindsay would now be very determined to win after Beth's sacrifice to her, and she would still be low-key into Caleb, so she would want an alliance with him. Caleb, still feeling bad about the whole thing between her and Beth, would want to do this too, and try getting Tess and Ellie on it as well. Since both girls are in trouble and Caleb doesn't want to work with the guys anymore because it's not morally right. Bowie and James maintain their alliance as the two most manipulative players in the game, ultimately sabotaging Caleb in the animal challenge. But Caleb, who's now actively going against them, would be very wary of such attempts. He would also have enough strength and charm that he could get most of the animals in this episode in the cage without too many issues anyway. I know this challenge didn't grant immunity for some reason, only the dinner prize. But I'm guessing this meant if you didn't get the animal in the cage at all, you're auto-eliminated, since last place punishment was cleaning the bathroom stalls, so not doing it at all must be just a you-lose type of thing. But anyway, yeah, Bowie and James try to fuck Caleb over, but it doesn't work. I think out of everyone here, Ellie would get her animal in first, and she would win the dinner, since Caleb, Bowie, and James are all doing, are all doing stuff, and they're all involved with each other. Jeff still has the beaver problem that he does originally, and even though Lindsay is determined, I just don't see her doing very well in this challenge. But she'd eventually get her animal in, it would just take a while. And same deal with Tess, I think she could eventually figure it out. With how big his ego is and how dirty he's been playing, I think Bowie would get last since I don't think he'd be great at this to begin with. But on top of that, now with all the time he's been wasting with failed attempts to sabotage Caleb on top of that, would make him last place. Now, even with everyone still up for elimination, these four have majority and are either getting rid of Bowie or James, since they're obviously the two biggest threats. And between the two of them, I think they would pick James, since Bowie already has the bathroom punishment, because from their point of view, it would kind of be like killing two birds with one stone. James would tell Caleb that he honestly respects the play, and he tells Bowie that he played the game well, but makes fun of him for being on toilet duty, and makes a relatively graceful exit. This is the, uh, the trial by tra- whatever, the 2v2v2 one. Once again, I'm making the teams based on what I think Chris would do. And what I did was I did Bowie and Ellie versus Jeff and Tess versus Caleb and Lindsay. Jeff and Tess would have a similar dynamic to Jeff and Gwen. They ultimately get along and Jeff gets Tess to come more out of his shell. Ellie and Bowie obviously wouldn't trust each other, but they would both be determined and competent enough to win, I'd say for both the second and third challenge. Caleb and Lindsay don't have beef, but just wouldn't do well here at all. Since they can't eat the fastest, Lindsay would lead them astray at the second part. And I think Ellie and Bowie just have better memory than the two, than these two for the last part of the challenge, where they have to remember the order of the previously eliminated contestants. So overall, Jeff and Tess win round one for them getting along and Jeff eating the fastest. And Bowie and Ellie would win rounds two and three, meaning that these two have immunity and these four are up for elimination. So since Bowie is immune, the next biggest threat slash outlier would be Jeff. Tess wouldn't want to vote him off, obviously, but the other four here would, since it just makes the most sense, especially if they believe the finale might be a popularity contest like in canon, meaning that Jeff would be a very big threat and they'd need to get rid of him. But even if they don't think that, I still think Jeff loses here by default. And then, of course, we have the democratic but not so democratic elimination episode we would still get all the losing characters at the resort interacting and yada 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 but as for the vote 
Because Katie and Sadie aren't here to fuck up the voting process, this vote would actually represent who everyone actually wants out. But the stupid rule of if they say the name in any context it still counts as a vote thing still applies here, so this elimination is still kinda gonna be bullshit. But after thinking about it, it's Ellie. Fiore and Alejandro would both talk about how she just kinda undeservedly coasted through the game, and how they just don't like her, and while others may not agree, I think they'd prefer if other people stay in because they think they just deserve it more. So like, for example, Tess would obviously have Trent support, Lindsay is just generally well-liked, um, and Caleb is just kind of a nice guy. Bowie is a villain, but he wouldn't be as hated as Heather is, so I don't think there would be like a dog pile on him fast enough to negate the kind of sort of apathetic vote pile up that Ellie would get. So sadly, Ellie is getting screwed here. This episode doesn't really matter that much. I think everyone here, I don't think anyone here would go crazy like Owen did with the Mr. Coconut thing. In fact, I think the combined intelligence of these three specifically would make this episode really short because I think they would figure out that the whole thing is a setup like pretty fast. So this episode would barely even count and there would be no elimination. Chef would still leave these four out in the woods and split them into two teams uh, with boys versus girls. Since even if they weren't splitting the teams up by gender specifically, I still think that th these two versus these two would make for the most interesting combos. So we're still going to go with that. Tess and Lindsay wouldn't really get along that well and not have a great sense of direction. Tess got back to camp in the Forest Challenge in Disventure Camp after, like, four other people got there, and Lindsay just doesn't have a great sense of direction no matter how determined she is. And while Bowie might still be planning to get rid of Caleb at some point because he perceives him as a threat, I don't think he'd risk sabotaging him now this time since it's down to the wire now and that's way too risky. So the guys would win pretty easily, which doesn't make for the best episode, but whatever. I also don't think Tess and Lindsay could pull the whole damsel in distress thing with either of these guys because... I mean, Bowie is gay, and Caleb, I just don't think, would really fall for it. I mean, he might, but I don't, I think Bowie would prevent that from happening. So now Chef has to eliminate either Tess or Lindsay, and I think he would pick Lindsay. He'd be more amicable to Tess's personality, and also respect her more, since in the boot camp episode, Lindsay was the first to quit, which would of course be shameful from Chef's perspective. Lindsay would be sad, but she would be proud of how far she got and she would take her elimination in relative grace. This makes the final three Bowie, Tess, and Caleb. Now for this episode, the challenge is really hard to determine because Owen isn't here, and a bunch of the dares revolved around him, and we also don't really know any of these three's resilience levels to stuff like this, but I do ultimately think Bowie loses here. It's likely Caleb and Tess would team up to take Bowie out with dare since they already kind of had an alliance beforehand and wanted to get him out beforehand, so they would still team up and whoop Bowie with dares. And also, if I had to guess, I actually think even though Bowie's will is strong, the other two's, the other two would be stronger. Caleb is just a naturally gifted and resilient guy, and I think he'd grow enough resolve to get through just about anything they throw at him. And, I mean, Tess threw her pills into a fire because Chris's daughter told her to in canon, so I don't really think there's much they can do to break her here. And if Bowie gets Lindsay's dare, which is likely because of the double team, that would probably be Bowie's breaking point because I don't think he'd go for that. I don't think he'd be bald and lose though, since he wasn't as cruel as Island Heather. He would remain with hair and still lose, thus making Caleb and Tess the final two. The finale honestly wouldn't be too dissimilar to the original. Tess is obviously taking Gwen's role. She'd plan to spend the money in a similar way, and Trent would still be just as supportive and still do that weird boulder thing. The difference being that Tess wouldn't be as hard to impress as Gwen was originally, but other than that, other than that not much changes there. Caleb would want to spend the money on a party like Owen did, but in addition, he would also want to donate it to animal shelters since it's canon that he worked at one before, which gets him even more favor with the other contestants than Owen did. Obviously, Caleb is a much more competent player than Owen, and so you'd think it'd be virtually impossible for there to be a way that he doesn't dominate, but believe it or not, I actually think it would be a pretty close race. Getting the flag at the top of the pole and walking across an easily breakable platform across shark-infested water are both things that make being a bigger, heavier guy like Caleb a pretty significant disadvantage to be, actually. But because he's a much more physically adept player than Tess, it would even out. So they would both be near the finish at roughly the same time. Also, none of the villains would be trying to sabotage either player, I don't think, since none of them really have a deep grudge against against either. Maybe you could make a case for Bowie trying to screw up Caleb 
from their beef earlier in the game, but that was more strategic than personal. I really don't think he'd care that much at this point. In fact, I probably think he would support him. And the two endings would be determined by where Caleb lands after doing a, a flip in the air to reach ahead to the finish line. And Caleb's ending, he lands perfectly on his feet right in front of the finish line. And in Tess's ending, Caleb would mess up the flip and faceplant into the ground while Tess crosses first. Either way, everyone would celebrate. The respective player, the respective winner would get the final marshmallow. They would throw Chris in the water, yada, yada, yada. Now, I am going to do two separate endings, but Caleb would get the official canon one. Because in order for the story to logically make sense as it progresses, the winner of season one has to willingly give up the 100k for a shot at the million in the island special which is something I definitely think Caleb would do, but I don't think Tess would. So Tess's alternate ending is just the end of this timeline altogether, whereas the quote-unquote canon one is Caleb's, which will then lead into the island special and total drama action and so on and so forth. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video.